Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. As always, it's lovely to have you company. So I'm just popping in today with um, quite a simple little design, but also I've put a bit of a Christmas twist on it. But to be fair, you could leave the holly off and just make it as um, a, a lovely generic card. Um, and really why I wanted to pop in and do this design is if you missed it, our lovely Mandy was on um, the craft store on um, Friday, that's the 12th of November, and um, she had these lovely new stamps. Um, and I thought, well, do you know what? It's an ideal opportunity for me. So if you've got them, um, to come in and give you a bit more um, inspiration of how to use them. Besides which, they were on my desk. <laughs> so you know what I'm like. I like to use what's on my desk. And I'm not going to overcomplicate it. You know, I like this sort of quite clean and simple design. Um, and I'm going to start, again, I'm going on a six by six card blank. So this is a five and a half inch by five and a half inch piece of, of cardstock. And um, I've just added my black Sharpie line round because you've all seen me do that enough. So I've done that at the beginning. So that's done and out of the way. And I'm just going to get my copy of paper I file it on the floor. I don't know about you, I find, find the floor so useful as a filing system, which is all right till I need to get up in a rush or until I realise that Eric's laid there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our stamping and I'm going to use, we've got this lovely floral uh, wreath flourish and it's a, a wreath flourish, which is quite a mouthful. So that's wreath flourish left and we have a right and I think this is the left one that I'm using and I've got to be honest it works so well with our beautiful Tia who's this gorgeous um I don't know is she an imp is she a fairy I, th I think you can decide but she sits beautifully and I must admit the inspiration and straight away obviously she sits on here stunningly um, but it gives you so many options and I like to sort of explore different options and in my head I'm thinking I'm going to put her actually sat on it this way just for a change but as I say she does sit beautifully you can make a full wreath with it we've got left and right I mean again so many options but we're going to put her actually sitting on it today and again I'm just going to ink up in black and I'm doing my stamping first and it's such a delicate wreath, this. As you know, I'm a bit of a, a wreathaholic, if there is such a thing. And as always, I've been a bit of a messy crafter. I need my inky binky, and I've just got some ink where I don't want it. And I'm going to put this sort of about, sort of midline, near the bottom. So I'm going to put that there. And it's such a delicate wreath this I think it's beautiful now the um demonstration the YouTube I did last Tuesday or was it Wednesday possibly Wednesday um where we added the brush holes this um stamp would work beautifully with that technique as well I mean I don't know about you but I can almost see a music score here now isn't that funny I've not noticed that before but just sat here stamping this talking to you so you know what if you've got somebody that's in to music in fact let me just I'm sorry but this is what happens this is the way my head works let me just have a little on my copy of paper could we let's have a look have I got a fine liner now I'm just looking, see I can see a music score here, you could do a double, I mean obviously this is just off the top of my head, treble clef isn't it, and you could do look music notes. Now again, that's just very very quickly but you could really turn this, And I mean again, I'm not, so many of you that are into music know exactly, but wouldn't that be stunning? Anyway, sorry, I digress. That's just the way my head works. I just saw that then and it just... <laughs> so let's pop Tia on. Let's sit her on. And I'm just going to turn it that way. You see, my head does wander. <laughs> you know what I'm like. So now she's a silhouette, so we need plenty of ink. So gentle tapping...
and again I'm just going to sit her let's pop her sort of in the middle with her hand just so her bottom's on there there we go now because she's a silhouette I'm just going to give that ink time to soak into the card again give it a good press and I'm using my, my Lavinia block so how are you doing anyway I hope you're having a good week I hope you had a lovely weekend must admit I'm feeling tons better thank you very much for all your messages it really is important and 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 it's lovely I need to thank you though because um I didn't get a chance to actually message everybody back individually and thank you but it has made such a difference to me your lovely messages oh there we go look at that she sits perfectly on there doesn't she now we've also got a little a north star now think of all the things you could put a flower here dangling that she's catching you could put some stars now if you did the music notes you could put a music note I mean again so many possibilities but then I'm going to put the north star because as I say I'm thinking a bit Christmassy so I'm just gonna just want it to be quite straight so I'm sorry if my head comes in shot <laughs> I have to remember you're there Oh, there we go. That's lovely. That's just above. But as I say, you could put a flower dangling there. I'm just going to give that a bit of a blot. Because obviously we've used our, our permanent ink and it's a slow drying ink. So what we'll do now is I want to add some colour. And for this, I'm actually going to use an Elements ink pad and it's the Violet Chalk. I love to use my elements, they're fantastic on the gel press, but obviously you can use them for stenciling and depending what sort of effect you want for stamping, lots of things you can use them with. And what I'm thinking is, I got my, um, I think this is this flower mask, my stencil out, and I'm thinking, uh, normally I would put sort of um, the circular mask there and make it a bit of a, a moon to highlight it, but I just thought, what about putting this instead and putting that in the middle? and almost radiating out so that's the way my head worked now again this is a new ink pad so with my stencil brush and again these are perfect for this I'm just going to take the colour off on my mat and I'm actually going to put the lid on my ink pad now it's really important to do this because the colours they are so juicy they've got so much pigment in now I just want to make sure my hands are clean and dry and I'm going to turn this round just because it's easier for me, it's the way my head works and I want the middle look in the middle of that star. I'm just going to hold it with a piece of kitchen towel. Now I know I've taken some off but I just want to take some more off because believe you me, if you do the first bit and it's too deep a colour, you'll regret it and you'll have to do your stamping again. So, sorry about this. But honestly, it's well worth it. And I'm going to start in the middle and I'm just gently, and it is gently, going to use a bit of a sort of circular motions and just gently, gently fill in this space. Being mindful to hold my stencil in place. Now, if I want any more colour, I can come and pick some of this up here off my mat and again, start in the centre and just work my way out. And for these areas, I'm going to do a sort of a circular motion, almost a blending and then a flicking motion because I just want the edge of that stencil. And again, just circular motions here and then a bit of a flick. And I can lift it up, look, to have a look. Oh, yeah, that's looking pretty. Now, I'm just going to move this and hold over here because obviously I need to do this area. So again, circular motions and then almost like a flick. And you'd be amazed how far the ink goes. And these brushes are just perfect for this. And if we lift up and have a look, yeah, now I think that's enough. So I'm going to take that off. Now that's enough ink for me. I don't want to add any more. But what I do want to do is just ground everything. So I'm going to come in for my landscape masks and I want number one. So that's the, well, in my head anyway, it's number one. It's the flatter one. And I'm just going to put that so it sort of catches the bottom of these two here. 
and again into my ink here pick it up almost start blending it and I'm just going to come off the mask always go on the mask first just a bit of a sort of a flick in and I'll go around the base of the card here just to add a little bit of colour in these corners just to almost ground the design we can have a little look yeah that's enough I'm happy with that quite funny this is my, my purple brush but this violet chalk is just a beautiful colour and I know there's a few of you that are sort of like your purple tones I was never a great fan of purple but you know what it's one of those colours now the more I use it and it's important I'm just cleaning just wiping my mask before I put it away because if I don't then I'm just going to get ink on my hands and we'll get ink on the card now with this here what I'm going to do is I've got my fine, my number one of the Lavinia brushes in my water pot. And I'm just going to pick up some of this ink, look. And again, remember, twist your brush and you'll keep a lovely point. And I'm just going to paint these little flourishes here. And that way I can keep it all matching, all tone on tone. Now, again, you at home will take a lot more care than me. Oh, I'm just going to turn it round. Again, for me, I just find it easier to turn my work and just paint these in. I mean, again, for me, this is a lovely way to do it because, A, I'm using up what's on my mat. I'm... My paintbrush is in my water pot at all times ready. First thing I do every day when I come in my craft room is fresh water in my water pot. Because I know at some point I'm going to be using it. It's very pretty, isn't it? And what I will do actually is just add a little bit more water. Now you can use your fan brush for this, but I'm just going to use my number one because it's the one I've been using. And just add a few little flecks, not too many. Just a few round here, round the star, just to take away that, that almost too white. And then I'm just going to come in and wipe this up. Otherwise, you know what will happen? I will put my hand in it and then we'll have it everywhere. Mr Rinky Binky still hasn't had his wash. He does need a wash. I keep telling him, hmm, maybe for Christmas, maybe I'll give him a... A bit of a wash for Christmas. Right, there we go. So this is the stage we've got to. And as I say, you could leave it at this stage. I think this is really pretty. We'll add a little bit of shade. Let's just add some shade here. And I'm just going to use my chalk pastel pencils. And I'm going to use the black and then come in with the purple just because we're keeping it sort of purple tones and just use my finger to smudge it out and obviously we'd have shade from that from our sort of arch but we'd have more shade where Tia is and she's here and then at each side here so there we go and her wispy bit sort of come away there so we'll give just sort of the idea of yep yeah. and what I will do while I've got my chalk pastel pencils is I'm just going to add a little bit of again I want to lean on my kitchen towel I'm just going to add a little bit of shape to her so I think she's got a nice little hat on here and she's Got, I think she's got a lovely sort of fluffy collar here and a nice little top, some little buttons and then here I think she's just crossing that knee I'll have to tell her it's not good for her to have her legs crossed I remember being told that when I was pregnant with Adam and you know what, I still do it how many of you still do it as well? I remember they used to say clinic don't cross your legs <laughs> hmm. 
Right, there we go. And I'm just going to add a little bit on my star. Just a tiny bit of white there. There we go. Now, as I say, you could leave it like this, and I think that is a is a beautiful design. But I thought, let's just make it a little bit more um, Christmassy. <laughs> really, I just want to make another Christmas card to go in my box. I'm really on it well this year. I've made a lot. So I'm going to come in with the pound holly stamp. And again, it's amazing how you can use this. And we're just going to add a few, not too many. And I'm coming in with Shady Lady. Oh, look at that. Don't tell Eric. There's a bit of an Eric hair there. Obviously not been hoovering my craft room good enough, have I? So I think I don't want to overdo it. So we'll put one there. And then I know I definitely want one at the base here. And then one in the middle. Maybe just alter the angle there. Yeah. And then let's see if we can fit three in this side. So I'm thinking one here, just under it here. Yep. Yeah. And the same thing, if I do the one at the bottom first. And remember, you can use your acetate. If you're not quite sure where to put your stamping, remember your acetate. And I'm thinking, let's have one there. Yeah, I like that shape. I didn't want it to look too equal on both and too symmetrical. And then I know berries are normally red, but I didn't want to bring red into this. So I could do them white and almost have them like a mistletoe berry. But I'm thinking, do you know what? Artistic license, my berries are going to be purple just because it goes in and uh, with my theme. So I'm using my signal and I think this one is, well, in my, oh, it's called violet. Mm, I was gonna say in my head it's purple. So it's actually called violet. So we're having these lovely magical violet berries. And again, try and get in the habit of coloring the ones furthest away first. So you've less chance of putting your hand in them and actually smudging them once you've coloured them in. And then I've got my silver and I'm thinking, let's just add some silver highlights onto our star. Just make it pop a little. And then let's just add some silver highlights just on our wreath. And maybe just the odd one on the lines where we've got the white on the holly. I mean, Trace is so good at leaving us these areas that are perfect then to add just that little bit of sparkle, that little bit of highlight. I mean, again, you could use your white Posca for this if you want. But I'm thinking my silver. Now, once again, you could stop at this stage if you, you know, happy with that and leave it at that. You could add, I'm purposely not adding a sentiment. I want to leave this one without a sentiment. I've just noticed a little mark there, so I'm going to lean across the camera. I'm just going to rub that out because it will annoy me. That's better. Now, what I'm going to add is we're going to add some snow here. Now, before we've used our Posca pen for this and we've used white paint and I've had quite a few ladies get in touch and asking what else you can use. So what we're going to use today is a chunky white embossing enamel or chunky white embossing powder. Now, a couple of things about this. Um, you don't need anything to actually attach this to your card, but we're going to heat it up, but we're going to heat from underneath. And again, what you do is sprinkle it on your card, heat from underneath, but slowly move your way around. Now, I will show you, but obviously the heat tool's quite noisy, so I'll explain first. I'm going to sprinkle it on my card, heat from underneath, but literally be quite close, probably about here, but move slowly around as it melts, and I'll try and show you it as it's melting. If you get too close, um, your card, cal card can singe a little, so I'm hoping we don't do that. But if we do, I'll tell you it was just so I could show you what happened. Um, but you do get used to how to do this. 
And my best tip is I like to just pop a little bit in my lid. I just find it easier to pinch from the lid. So my suggestion is at the base here, I want almost some clumps of this. So I'm going to put some little pinch bits, clumps here. And then round here, I just want some lighter bits. I really don't want them on here, so I'm just going to brush them away from where she is. Try and disperse these out a little. I don't want big clumps up there. And then my suggestion is pop your heat tool on and just let it warm up first before you actually put it under. So I'm going to switch my heat tool on now. And as I apologise, it will be noisy. Now I have got it on the highest setting and I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds to heat up. And then I'm going to bring it underneath. And I'm just doing this top corner here. And I'm hoping you can see as it starts to melt. Just can you see here, look, where it's melted. So I'm going to work my way down. Again, don't waft your heat tool. Just slowly move it under. So underneath, I've slowly moved it under this area. So now we'll go here and I'll heat this, this, this and then this. So again, that little bit at the corner, look, that's gone. Now this is quite a large chunk here. Obviously that's melting that nicely now. On to the next chunk. Now obviously as you get closer to your hand, you'll notice it gets quite warm on your hand. So just turn your card round and hold it in a different place. I'm hoping you can hear me. If not, I apologise. I can't shout anymore. I'm really sorry. So I'm literally just working my way around. And as soon as it melts, as soon as I see it melt, just move my heat tool around. Now my suggestion is, you may get a little bit of steam coming off. You will get that because the ink sweat. Once you've finished, I tend to take mine from the top just pop it over any loose bits or just spray but it will just there we go so i heat from the top just for a couple of seconds once i've finished just to fix any little bits but there we go and you can see how this is really melted and the white obviously will show up more if you've got deeper color in the background so this is quite a light color but that's nice because i didn't want it to be too much in your face now, I purposely haven't put any on the holly, but you could sprinkle some on the holly. Fabulous thing for Christmas cards. Now, obviously, because we've heated the card, it will just warp momentarily, but it will go back nice and flat. Now, important thing, I just need to put the lid, put this powder back in and put the lid on. Otherwise, if I knock that over, I won't be happy bunny, will I? And that's the card design finished. So if I bring the one in that I've already created, just pop that on the back like I do. There we go. As I say, this is slightly just because the card's warm. But I think, again, this, if you wanted to batch card make, you could just use different colours. As I say, for me, I'd make some without the holly. I mean, we've got lots of other. You could add some leaves. You could add some gems. Oh, I mean, again, you know what? my mind just all the things we could do so i hope you like that design i hope you like our lovely new tier thank you for joining me as always and thank you for your lovely comments you take care everybody i'll see you again soon much love and hug bye for now